Hello everyone, in this video we will implement Q using Array. As we already know, Q is a linear data structure which follows FIFO that is first in first out method and the two ends of the Q are called front and rear where insertion always takes place at the rear and the elements are accessed or removed from the front and the basic operations are NQ which is adding an element to the Q DQ which is deleting an element from the Q show front to display the element at front and is empty to check whether the queue is empty or not. So let's implement queue using array. Firstly we need to define the size of the array. Suppose we define size as 5 and then we create an integer array of 5 elements. For this example I am taking the type as integer but you can define an array of any type. So now we have created a global array of 5 elements which is initially empty Next we will declare our two variables front and rear and we will initialize them as minus 1 which means that initially the queue is empty. Let's start with the isEmpty method which returns a boolean value to tell whether the queue is empty or not. The queue is empty when front and rear both are equal to minus 1 and if that's the case we can simply return true else we will return false. Now let's see how we will insert an element in the queue. For that we will create our nq method which takes as argument an integer value which is to be inserted into the queue. Now from the concept of queues we know that we can only insert a value at the rear but initially rear has the value minus 1 which is an invalid index in the array. So to insert an element in the queue first we will increment rear and then we will insert the value at rear. So suppose we have to nq the value to for that we will increment rear by 1 therefore it will have the index 0 and then we will simply insert 2 at that index. Now when we insert the first element in the queue we need to take care of front as well because when we insert the first element in the queue our variable front still has the value minus 1 which is an invalid index. So if the queue is empty and we insert the first element in the queue we will make front equal to 0. And now both front and rear are at their correct position. Similarly if we nq3 we will increment rear and place the value 3 at index 1 and again if we nq5 we will increment rear and place the value 5 at index 2. Again if we nq7 we will increment rear and insert 7 at index 3 and again if we nq8 we will increment rear and insert the value 8 at index 4. And now we can observe that our queue is full as it has a capacity of 5 elements and all the 5 elements are in the queue. Therefore if now we try to enqueue another element say 9 we cannot insert it in the queue as the queue is already full. So while inserting an element in the queue we have to check if the queue is full then we don't have to increment rear and we have to simply say that we cannot enqueue as the queue is already full. So now taking all this into consideration let's write our nq function where firstly we check if rear is equal to size minus 1 that is our q is full as rear is pointing to the last index we will simply print that the q is full and we cannot insert any more elements in the q else if we are inserting the first element that is front is equal to minus 1 we will make front as 0 which is the first index in the array and then we will increment rear and insert the value at rear and therefore we have successfully implemented our nq function. So now let's see how we can dequeue or remove an element from the queue. Now as we know we can remove elements only from the front of the queue. When we perform the dequeue operation we will simply increment front by 1 therefore moving front to the next element in the queue and as we consider the queue to start at front which would mean that the queue is now starting at index 1 and we have removed the element 2 from the queue. Therefore if we further perform the dequeue operation we will again increment front by 1 therefore removing the element 3 from the queue and again performing the dequeue operation let's remove 5 from the queue and 7 as well. Now we have only one element left in the queue which is 8 and if we remove this last element the queue would become empty and the condition for empty queue is that front and rear both have the value minus 1. So when we are removing the last element from the queue we have to make front and rear equal to minus 1. 
Therefore, when we dq8, we will make front and rear equal to minus 1. And another case is when the queue is empty, we cannot perform a dq operation. So now let's complete our dq function. So first we will check if the queue is empty. This means that we cannot perform the dq operation. So we will simply say that the queue is empty. Else we will check if the element we are removing is the only element in the queue that is when front is equal to rear. We will make both front and rear equal to minus 1. Else we will simply increment front to dq the element. And with this, we have successfully completed our dq function. Now let's create the show front function, which will display the element at front. So first, if the queue does not have any elements, we will simply say that the queue is empty. Else, we will display the element at front. Now let's create another function display queue, which will display all the elements of the queue. So again, we will check if the queue is empty, we will simply print that. Else, we will start our for loop from front to rear and display the element at every index. Now let's combine all the functions into a single program for better understanding. So we start by including the header file and using the standard namespace. Then we define the size of our queue, which in this example is five. And then we declare our array of five elements, followed by our variables front and rear, which we initialize to minus one. Next, we start with our isEmpty function which returns true if the queue is empty, that is when front and rear both are equal to minus one, otherwise it returns false. Next, we start our nq function, which takes as argument an integer value, which is to be inserted into the queue. But before inserting the value in queue, we check that if rear is equal to size minus one, which would mean that rear is at the last index and the queue is full, so we cannot insert any more elements. Else if the queue is not full, we will check if we are inserting the first element, that is front is equal to minus one, then we will make front equal to zero, and then we will increment rear and insert the value at rear. Next we will start our dq function, wherein first we will check if the queue is empty using the isEmpty function. We will print that the queue is empty and we cannot remove any element from the queue. Else we will check if the queue contains only one element, that is front is equal to rear. In that case we will make both front and rear equal to minus one. Else we will simply increment front. Now let's write our show front function and again we will check if the queue is empty. We will simply print that, otherwise we will display the element at front. Now let's write our last function to display the queue and again we will check if the queue does not have any elements. We will simply say that the queue is empty, else we will start our for loop for i is equal to front to i less than equal to rear and we will display the element at each index. And now inside our main function we can perform any operation on the queue. So that was all for this video. Thank you for watching.